What's up guys, Billy here, and today I'm going to walk through my process when color correcting drone footage. Color correcting your footage in post production is one of the most important steps as you really can give your shot a totally different feel and overall make the colors look better. In this video I will be using Final Cut Pro, but I do hope to branch out to new softwares in the future. If you'd like, you can copy down the values I'd use and try to translate them into whichever software that you use. To get the camera settings out of the way for the clips that I'm going to show you in this video, I'll put a screenshot up from my flight earlier today. Depending on the weather outside, these settings will of course vary, but the main setting I want to focus on is the color profile, which I have set to normal. In older versions of the DJI GO app, this was known as None, but they have recently changed the name in the newest update. The reason I bring this up is because the colors of your shot will vary depending on what profile you use. For example, D-Log produces a very unsaturated and flat image, while Normal makes all the colors look fairly normal, with no color grading added. The color correction I'm going to show you will give you the best results in the Normal profile. Another setting I want to bring up is the style settings. Just as a reference, I have these set to a value of 0 across the board. Now just as a little backstory, the shots I'm going to show you are from my spring break trip to LA. I sat in my room a few nights ago and took the time to make a color correction I could use across all of my clips, whether they were taken with my drone, DSLR, or my phone. This color correction even looks good regardless of the weather. There are some clips where the sun is completely out and others where there is a tremendous amount of fog. Anyway, this is the clip that I'll be using as a demonstration. The normal color profile makes the image look usable, but with the power of color grading, we can make it look even better. As we slide the color corrected image over top of the original one, we can see just how much better it actually looks. The colors pop, but it's not too oversaturated, which sometimes can be distracting. Overall, I think it looks fairly nice and realistic. The process for actually color correcting an image is by first selecting it and then opening the color board, which can be accessed by clicking Command 6 on your keyboard. Within the color board, we are able to change our color, saturation, and exposure. I generally like to create three separate color corrections, one for each set of values to easily correct mistakes. As for my values, we will start with the exposure. This is something that I like to set first. You'll notice I have the values staggered, which is a common practice when color grading. We can choose to globally set our exposure or fine tune it by setting the exposure values for the shadows, midtones, and highlights. To get the most control, I tend to stay away from just globally changing the values. For shadows, I have it set to 4%. For midtones, I have it set to negative 4%, and finally, as for the highlights, I have it set to negative 10%. Moving on to our saturation, we again have the same options global, shadows, midtones, and highlights. This comes down to personal preference as you can choose whether you want your colors to pop or stay flat. I again have my value staggered with a global at 15%, shadows at 23%, midtones at 8%, and highlights at negative 7%. Finally, we have color, which is something that yields the most customization. This is something that we can change depending on the type of shot that we have. I wanted more of a blue tint to my footage, considering I was at the beach with a lot of shots of the water. These values may be hard to copy down exactly, but with some slow mouse movements, you should be able to replicate it very easily. The final touch I add onto my videos is a sharpening effect. We can add this by going into our video effects and simply searching sharpen. Drag it onto your clip and choose a value of anywhere between 1 and 2. Anything else will make it look a little bit odd. Although this doesn't relate to drone footage, I want to show you a quick example using my Panasonic G7. This is a clip taken during a very foggy day, but once again I add the same color correction I went over in this video and it makes it look so much better. Again, it really doesn't relate to drones, but I love how versatile this color correction is, letting me quickly add it to all of my clips that I have in my video. Now if you've stuck around for this long, I'll let you in on a little secret. You can easily add this color correction to your Final Cut Pro presets by following a few short steps. First of all, click the link in the description to download the preset that I went over in this video. Unzip the file that I've provided and keep it handy as you will be able to drag it right into Final Cut Pro. Next we want to open a finder window. Click go up top and then click go to folder. Copy and paste the other text that I've put in the description to access this hidden folder which pretty much holds all of the color presets for Final Cut Pro. Drag the downloaded preset into this folder, restart your Final Cut Pro application, and there you are. You should be able to simply apply this correction to your clips with the click of a few buttons. So guys, that about wraps this video up. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I have been trying to upload daily. Also leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think of this color correction that I've created. 
But guys, as I said, this video is coming to an end, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.